What's up, everyone? And today we're playing Derail Valley. And today we've got something kind of fun to try. We've got a pair of steam engines here. And uh, I'm knocking on wood that we'll only need the one that's fired up. But we might need the second one. So we'll see here. I'm going to kick the brake off and get us rolling. Cute little puff puff. So we're at the coal mine. And there's quite the grade out of the coal mine. And uh, the hopper cars full of coal tend to be quite heavy. And I wanted to do this so I could show you guys the, the reason that the steam engine in Derail Valley made me quit playing the game previously. Uh, so that perhaps we could do another shot at it down the road with the cutoff mod installed. But basically, uh, the issue with the Derail Valley steam engine is that it doesn't accurately simulate the way that steam is used. Uh, so if, if you're coming close to a stall and you don't have any chuff sounds happening, you're still wasting steam. And uh, we'll get more into that, as assuming when we do stall, assuming that we will. Uh, we're going to try not to, but I'm assuming we are going to stall because we're about to put 640 plus 400 tons. So, you know, 1,040 tons behind this thing, which I'm pretty sure it's not going to want to do. I think it's rated for 1,000 tons, and that's on the level, and there's a bit of 2% grade there. So the two jobs, are they 03 and the 46? And yes, they are. Uh, so we'll just knuckle into these. Not that we have knuckles, but you know. <laughs> We're going to couple up to these. Not that we can... Uh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> we will do the, the screw and chain connection thingamabob <laughs> to, to the cars. And uh, we'll get it put together and go accept the job. And then uh, if we need to fire up a second steam engine and shove on the rear, we will. <laughs> there's actually uh there's precedent for that of course there's a great video i think it's called the push pull climbing the grade but there's a great video that someone took at the coon brace and toltec where uh the lead engine either had non-functional sanders or the sand ran out or something and uh they had to bring a second k36 out of chama to shove on the rear and it meant the sound in that of I mean, they're just in the Narrows uh, on the way up to Cumbres Pass, right, where there's a lot of great echo in the canyon. And listening to two K36s work for the money, oh, ho, 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 man, it's awesome. I mean, e each exhaust beat sounds like a rifle firing. It's just awesome. Uh, so you guys should totally go check that out. But it's a, it's a religious thing as far as uh, steam locomotive sounds go. So we're gonna we're gonna grab these and uh, I don't know if it's gonna sound that cool, but uh, it should be hopefully be fun here. I do now have the remote control. I was hoping that a DE6 would be here because that would have been easier, but we've been blessed with a steam locomotive instead. So we'll we'll just you know we'll do the double steam engine thing if we need to. But I'm wondering, dunk, if I get enough of a run at it, if uh, if we can't take the hill, you know charging speed here so okay so the air is cut in we're all connected here and now we're gonna go ahead and grab the other cut of cars in the industry they call this doubling over because there's a slang term for literally everything on the railroad i swear <laughs> and we grab the shorter cut of cars first so it'll be an easier move to get on top of these with the way that the railroad is anymore, they're trying to run longer and longer trains because you're hauling more freight with, you know, potentially less crews and less locomotives. Doesn't always that work out that way, but that's what they try to do, despite testing the train and building the trains taking a lot of time. They try to run a couple mile, you know, almost three mile long trains. At least out of my area of the world, they were trying to build, you know, like 13,000, 14,000 foot long grain trains to send back over the hills to the east and it's just i mean a monumental amount of effort for what savings i don't know but we just fixed the locomotives we didn't run the trains <laughs> at least at bnsf anyway we're all lined in there and we'll bring them back but the the point of that being that most of the yards aren't that long, so you'd have to you'd build it in cuts, and then you'd have to double over. So you'd grab your power, get on the first cut of cars, or typically the car shop would leave uh, your power ready 
on uh, the cut of cars that they inspected because they had to do an air test on the train. Terminal air, air test, make sure the brakes were working. Um, and then uh, you, you'd grab that one cut and then pull out the yard back into the next track and do exactly what we're doing, grab the other half. Of course, the, the yard wasn't, you know, like a thousand feet long with like this is or whatever it is. Uh, it was, you know, a good mile or two miles long and you, you had to get couple cars you know a couple strings of cars to make a, a super long train so oh lordy that's coming up kind of quick set them up okay that was a little aggressive this is why you have a brakeman and an engineer and a fireman and you're not trying to do it all yourself that's why we ended up with an exploded big boy at the end of that scenario and train simulator in the that other video this week. <laughs> oh, come on. Air still hasn't recovered, so it's not letting me shove through it. Bunk. Yeah, you can feel that. Does not want to move. Oh, did we finally come up in contact, maybe? That's laced up. Here we are. Yes, we've contacted. And we do the buffer thing. And we get slowly squeezed to death by the train cars. Air is cut in. Teleported out. So now we want to get ourselves set up to charge out out of town like we, like we mean it. Um, and we want to do so with as much runway as physically possible. So we're going to shove back first. And we're going to see if we can't highball through the yard. Because <laughs> the grade out of town starts, like, properly early. It starts pretty much on the bridge, I think. Yeah, 1.1. You can go 100 kilometers an hour if you can get up to speed, but just for that, you know, 100 yards or whatever, then you can have to go 80. <laughs> so silly. So, point is, you can't really go much more than 30 or 40 through these switches, but if you can get going to that 30 or 40... And then uh, just pull right through it. It'll work. All right. That way you have the best shot of making the hill. Because there's a, a, a thing with steam locomotives, and, and well, trains in general, but where you have starting tonnage and maintaining tonnage. And they're two different things. So if you have enough power to maintain th the uh, amount of pulling force you have, you may not necessarily be able to restart something from a dead stop. And we're going to set up the independent to roll the slack out while we do this. And I don't we're not like all the way back, but I think we'll reasonably be able to get up to a good 40 before we uh encounter the grade, so I think that'll be okay. Okay, so next we're going to go to the station, which is just all the way back here. And uh, first things first, I have to pay for my little oopsie that was on the Deerhill Valley live stream. <laughs> the, uh, I'm going to go see if I'm lined in. And then the train flew down the mountain and it uh, properly binned itself. But uh, now we're going to now we're gonna do the thing. 32 minute bonus time. Let's go. Okay. So we got the jobs. And now we need to get in our choo-choo. And uh, if we have to bring a second engine, we're going to totally not make the bonus time. But I haven't run this line in a minute, so we're going to try it. All right. Get a fire nice and stoked. Get that going. We've primed the boiler by putting too much water in it, probably. So, you know, we don't need more water for now. And we're going to get sand going just so that we can get some sp proper speed going here. I want to have as much speed as I possibly can before we get on the hill. I don't want to use too much sand, but I want to use a little just so I can get that full throttle out the gate here. Okay. We need that fire temp to come up. Okay, we're going to back off, kick the sand off, get the fire temp to start coming up so that we can really start making some steam. Because we want as much pressure as we need, too. Because you need the pressure for the tonnage as well. Because your tractive effort is directly correlated to how much pressure you, you have. 
So if you're not using full pressure, then guess what? You're not getting full tractive effort. Well, then we got up to about the speed I thought we would. We're doing about 30, and we're about to get on the grade here. All right, well, we'll see if we make it here. All right, well, so far so good. Fire attempt's still coming up, which is good. Still accelerating. Throttle's wide open, about halfway back on the bar. If we bring it back, we're getting a little more speed, which doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense, because now we're using more steam, even though we have just in increased our efficiency, which is the whole problem with this thing. So we'll back off the throttle a little bit. Yeah, the, uh, the whole point of the Johnson bar, or in this case the scroll reverse, is to set the cutoff point for the valve, uh, which is this guy up here, and then your piston's down there. This, the valve up top emits steam into the piston and actually makes it do what it can do. God, we're going to go up 2.3% grade. Yeah, something tells me we're not going to make this. That's all right. We're going to try our darndest. But anyway, as you bring this closer and closer to center, it sets the cutoff closer and closer to center, and you start relying on the expansion of the steam from the boiler to actually power the piston. You get a lot better efficiency that way. And then the throttle basically scales that efficiency. And uh, it's just really not modeled. So if we come to a stop, it'll be glaringly obvious um, why, why it's wrong. And hopefully we will, just so I can explain it. But hopefully we won't, because if we do, it'll I guarantee you I'm going to get frustrated at it. All right, it's wide open now. Gonna run run the bar down a little bit. That's uh, not sounding good. And we still have a fair bit more hill to go. <laughs> Can it do it? Come on! Hopefully, it'll be dramatic, like. Uh, one of the times we are running Polar Express and uh, my coworker uh, forgot to fill the sand dome and we ran out of sand because it was super low. And uh, <laughs> to my credit, we never stopped, but uh, we got really close to stopping. We were going about a quarter mile an hour for about two minutes on the world's shortest hill. So, and Of course, that was the check ride while the, uh, <laughs> the people that run the event and license the event were riding. But they understood. It was, you know, <laughs> it was a railroad moment. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the fun of it that was that the way that the throttle works on 491, the engine we were running for Polar that year, so it's up in the steam dome. You can't really see it right now from our vantage point, but and then the, it controls your steam there, and then you go to the superheater header and. You distribute the steam through the superheaters, which run back and forth between the smoke box and the fire box. So you have a ton of piping after the throttle before it gets to the cylinders. So any change you make is a couple seconds away from having an effect. And we're losing pressure. It's a cheat with the blower a little bit. Make sure we can keep that fire temp just absolutely cooking. And it says, no, you will not have any steam pressure. <laughs> the grade's decreasing. We're almost there. It's just eating the pressure away. All right, we're just going to watch the pressure gauge disappear now. Yeah, this is the problem. This does not decrease this fast. That's not what happens. You need to have a valve event, a chuff sound, to make this decrease. It can't linearly decrease like this unless you're 
it's, uh, seals and rings and everything are just absolutely ruined. We're going to run this thing out of pressure. Oh, well, we also have no water, so we've gone from priming to exploding. It's fine. Fire temp's nice and hot, so we can melt that crown sheet very efficiently. <laughs> okay, let's come back up, because we have a magical valve over there. We can just dump as much cold water in the boiler with no ramifications as possible. Hell, the, the pressure is kind of holding on, which is hilarious, as we slog it up this with more than tonnage. God, but it, the grade increases again. We're going to be so done. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> anyway, when we were stalling out with 491, it was like any change you made it was so far away from happening that you basically have to sit there and go wide open, you know, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close with the throttle to keep it from slipping because he couldn't find a happy spot where it would just sit. I'll try and bring the bar back a little bit, see if we can't get a little more pressure. And we are fully cheating with the blower. Not that the blower would do absolutely anything in this situation. The blower on the engines that I know is an inch and a quarter piece of pipe. And with it going through a cute little valve like this, you know, steam versus the exhaust steam coming out of a, I don't know, 20 inch diameter piston. So, I mean, the exhaust nozzle is bigger than, than the blower line is. You get a lot more of a draft through that. Well, it hasn't said no yet. Oh, well, that said, had the sand on that whole time. Just put the sand off. Let's see if we can keep it going. And it cooks through the coal. I mean, you can literally watch the coal disappear, which is just... It's just wrong. To be fair, actually animating what happens in the firebox would be a total pain. Because even getting reference for it would be a pain, because try to melt cameras if you put them that close. Oh, we've, we've found... Some something has gotten heavy all of a sudden. Oh, the whole train's gotten on the the steep bit is what's happened there. Come on, train! <laughs> How fast are you going? No, we're not going fast at all. Oh, and we were sliding a little bit that whole time. Okay, so observe. Very limited valve events happening, and the pressure gauge is just falling like a rock. This is just not how that works. Well, hey, now I'm getting pressure back at a rapid rate, which is funny. And now it's just going to try and walk in place. That's a fun trick. Nope, it's not having it. Nope. Okay, well... Rather than remove the rest of our sand from the equation here. We'll do this. We'll take a nice set on the train. All the air is set. Take another scoop of cold air. We'll kick the blower off. And hopefully this thing doesn't eat through the coal too stupid fast as it cools off. Um, and we will go get a, uh, <laughs> a second engine to shove on the rear of this. Because, yeah, because... I have no valve events. I have no steam exhausting yet. I can watch the pressure gauge disappear. Yeah. <laughs> I need to install that cutoff mod if I'm going to keep complaining about this. And I do believe they're fixing this stuff in simulator as well. All right. I'm going to go grab a second locomotive and we'll make it happen. Okay. We are back at the coal mine and we've now got the number five. Yes. Number five is well, mostly alive. So we're, uh, we're going to send it here. And uh, just walk up the hill and go see if we can't find a stalled train that we can help. <laughs> it is funny that, just like the real thing, when you don't have pressure, you really have to open the throttle wide the heck open for it to do anything. <laughs> Why are you acting like your brakes are on? Oh, the brake pipe hasn't recharged yet. 
Because the brake pipe was zero? Because it was sitting? Weird, whatever. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Considering there's no air compressor on this locomotive. <laughs> you realize that during a live stream. It's running around and it's like, where's the air compressor? It doesn't have one. Well, that's fine. You don't need air for things. Is there air? You don't know. It's an alien plant. Wait. It's the wrong thing again. Oh, we almost let that fire die. Nailed it. All right, so it says we can do 100, so we can go do 100 till we find the train, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> All right, we've got plenty of speed under us now. We've primed the boiler yet again. Melted the top fitting. <laughs> I don't know why that's orange. Leave the blower off. Let's let this get up to temp finally, perhaps. be really funny if the brakes didn't hold and then all of a sudden we had a, a train roll into us and we had a head-on collision going you know combined speed of 80 or whatever <laughs> there's a hole in the level right there if it was a tf2 map it would leak <laughs> no the shrub blow the whistle that time? It looked like the shrub might have blown the whistle. Alright, so we just keep a, a wary eye on the horizon and then go, oh god, when we have to stop. I think that's how that works. And we are for sure not making the bonus time anymore. And we're going to incur the extra maintenance costs of dealing with two locomotives. Oh well. This is going to be a challenge to fire, I think. Anyone see a train? Maybe it's run itself up the rest of the way. I don't know what distance they render in at. Speaking of render distance, uh, we've been doing some more testing with Railroads Online with the new update. We're just on the dev side, and uh, we are experimenting with a longer client-side render distance. Uh, and it's it's a much nicer now. About two-thirds of a mile, so even pretty long trains you'll be able to see all of. Which is a little bit more than double, I think, right now. We're also experimented with new chuff sounds, so quite excited. Hopefully you guys will be too. I know it's taking a while for the update to come out, but hope you guys are waiting patiently and excited for it just like we are. I want to say it was just past this cut. Because I think that was the speed sign. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Gently kick the pants of the other train. Okay, and now reenacting that one fateful day on the Cumbres and Toltec. Smoothly, dunk, there we go. <laughs> All right, couple it in. <laughs> it does the weird dance that they like to do. I guess we could tie the air in for reasons. And we'll come up to the front engine assessor situation. Kick the automatic off. Maybe we shouldn't have kicked the automatic off. Maybe we should have left the automatic on. Anyways, get the throttle going. Okay, and now we run back to the other one. <laughs> and start pulling out on the throttle here. Make sure that this thing's ready to rip. Need some more water. Give it. Get it just to the point of slipping. All right, starting to walk away with the train here. Two engines, one on either end. Come on, darling. Give you sand. You don't want to be doing that. Get the damper open. We slipping? Not slipping. All right. 
Get a little bit more out of this guy. Give him sand. We need more fire temp out of this one. And less water. Come check on you in a minute. Same story up here. Also need more fire temp. We're not going fast enough to get the damper to do anything, apparently. Not that the bar in the corner and the throttles wide open would, wouldn't be drafting the train. Goodness. You'd be drafting the heck out of the fire with that. Your fireman would hate you if you're walking this slow with your bar that far in the corner. All right, we'll kick the blower off here so we don't run through every ounce of coal we have. Because these things really don't have a whole lot of coal, which is hilarious. Same story here. And we can kick the gun off there. God, we were so close! We only needed the second engine for just that far? Oh my god. <laughs> so close. All right, what are we doing back here? Get the throttle wide open. It's fun to hear the desynced exhaust beats in the middle there. All right, so then we'll uh, we'll just cut the rear engine off and then pray that uh, it isn't a million dollars to service as soon as we crest here. Although we are coming up, now we're coming up to a converging junction. And then we'll want to go to the right at the next junction and go around the, the loop. The vaguely Tehachapi loop. Not really, it's a lot bigger than that, but. Okay. This is all going downhill now. So we just come back to this choo choo. We shut the throttle off, shut the sand off. Just put the brake on full. And then we say, goodbye, my friends. And then we teleport out of this car that we're stuck in. And then hopefully prevent this train from wrecking. How's that sound? Sound good? Sounds good to me. Kick the sand off. Not that we have any sand left. We've gone through every ounce of sand we had. We have water. We have temperature. All right, now we need speed. Yes. All right, once we get through that, we can uh, do the thing. We can get up to 60. All right. Toot. Yes, I blew you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Nobody asked. All right. 60 through this. Lordy. Okay. Whatever you say, boss. Probably don't need all that pressure anymore. Or do we need the water coming in? Okay, we hit 60. Going downhill a little bit, so I'm going to set the train up and quickly release it because those little bites. Well, this is a neat view. <laughs> little bites will actually slow you down pretty significantly as it propagates through the train when you have this much train behind you. And 70 through there. All right. And then we, but we're coming up to the junction. We're speeding up again. It's so going to take another little bite. And kick it off right away. What way are we lined? I'm, I'm not even in the cab! Okay, now we're th lined that way. I didn't see what the thing said as far as speed goes, but, but I'm going to assume the worst and dump the air. Oh, it says 60. Okay, well, we'll just pull through it then. Now it says 50 and going downhill. Okay, and that's the console. Hello. Okay, is this the right direction? He says after he's gone through the junction? Yes, okay, so we're gonna go around the loop and we have to go left at the next uh, Y, basically. Again, nobody asked you. Who made the physics, the, the whistle rope physics based? It's a silly, silly decision. We get bonus points if we bin it trying to get the bonus. 
Or do we get minus points for binning it after not making the bonus? Took a little bite, kicked it off. Got a 60 and the speed's going up is what the green and the... It, the locomotive agrees. So we're gonna give it the beans. Although it's 60 through here and it goes up later, so we'll just leave it there. And then know that we can then go 80 for however long this is. Although the rear of our train hasn't cleared, so hopefully we don't slingshot it off the track behind us. Just gonna send it. Now this looks like a decently long chunk of rare. Uh, pulling out my wallet for the, the memories. That's faster than 80. It's fine. It looks okay. What's that up there? 70? Okay. We'll take a big gulp and release it pretty quick. Take another one. Just trying to pinch it down before we get yeeted into the tunnel portal. One more. And a 60 now, and it's going down, so we're just going to take a big grab and uh, leave it for a bit and then kick it off. And I'm basically fanning the automatic, which is how you look, run out of air pressure in your main reservoir, which is how you run away. But there's no air compressor modeled on this locomotive, nor is there a main reservoir gauge. So we're not going to worry about it. And I know that got me in tr trouble with Train Simulator, but I trust uh, Smokebox's uh, modeling and uh, simulation more than I trust D-Rail Valley's at this point. Because D-Rail Valley is meant to be a fun game and not a hardcore sim. All right. Well, it's going to be going up, but we have a 40 through here. And it makes sense. That's a bit of an S-curve through the portal. But look how pretty that is. We're going to be down there in a minute. Could have gone and lined my own switch. But now we can do 60. So, And I wanted to put coal in, but we're up against the pops the whole time, so just leave it be. But now we're going to use some steam because we're going to need some speed and power. <laughs> this is a pretty bit of railroad. Let's see if we can't get up to 60. And we're going to run through to the backside of some terrain. <laughs> I think that's why you can't teleport through the tunnels, actually. Not easily, at least. So this is the last bit of 60 right there, I think. And then we could go 80, but it's going to go right back down to 60 based on the, the down symbol. So I guess we'll enjoy the 80 while we can. Not that we're in any danger of making the bonus time anymore. Well, this is a decently long bit. I'm just waiting for the sign. There it is. 60. Took a big... Pretty much dumped the train and then released it. And we're down to 60. Yeah, with the way that the air bites you as it propagates back through the train and the delayed release, it really... And the, the way that the brakes are so effective when you take even the first set, I mean, you really just kind of have to take a set and kick it off and let it ride. We talked about this uh, a little bit during the... Oh my god, we're going to hit this tree. I'm going to blow my whistle at it. Don't hit me, tree. <laughs> All right, we got a 40 through here, so we're going to dump that real quick. And then release it. Anyway, we were talking about it a little bit in the uh, the video on when we did caboose racing with Khan. That's not my switch, is it? No, it's not. It's that switch. All right. And we're back down to a sane speed, so that's perfect. Need a little bit more airflow. So you've, you've managed to use up all my pressure, shocker, without looking at the fire. Um, but it's it's real a real technique where the sideways forces in the rail against the wheel as you go around a sharp curve like this can really slow you down quite a bit you know presumably that you're not being flung off the side of the canyon so um it's pretty common practice to take a set let it ride for a little bit on a straight section and then release it prior to a curve because as the set releases and the cars release the curve will actually hold and maintain your speed and then once you exit the curve you can take another set because you kind of have to cycle through your air so that you're not you know, using up all of your 
air and then you have a runaway train situation on your hands. Bring the damper back up. Even though we're not... It shouldn't do anything, really, because we're not drafting the fire with anything other than velocity of air over the top of the stack, which really isn't anything compared to the exhaust of the locomotive. And we're going to be a little gutsy and... Oh, it's pretty far off still. I thought the junction was coming up. I guess I have a map that I could look at before I just leave my train unattended. Okay, we can start adding some water in. We didn't run it dry this time for once. Yes, the whistle agrees. Okay, we're about to that 40 there. This is the cutest little tunnel. Oh yeah, the junction's just past this. We're going underneath our ourselves right now. This is the detach bee moment. <laughs> it's fun. Oh god, we're already doing 60. This is steep through here. Oh boy. We just grabbed all of the air, all of it, and we're going to keep that set up a little bit, and while it propagates back through, we're going to run and throw the switch for ourselves. Does that say 30? It says 30. Well, it's okay. My, uh, my oh poop move. <laughs> yes, Whistle. How, how are you? Uh, my oh poop move uh, <laughs> saved us a little bit, so we're already doing 30. We, we planned it that way. Okay, so we'll sneak through this elevated Y. This is kind of strange, but fun. And then uh, we'll be heading on further to the uh, the sawmill, or not the sawmill, wrong game, the steel mill. I'm not sure what that speed sign was. MOW needs to come chop that tree, get it out of the way. looks reasonably like a 40 or 50 through here don't you think maybe a 50 it looks like a 50 looks like a good 50 to me maybe not that up there maybe that's not a 50 what a pretty lake wouldn't it be nicer if a steam engine was in it oops falls off track Dear El Valley, increasing your scenery by throwing upside down trains into them. This is the longest time without a speed sign anywhere on this entire map, I think. Still haven't seen one. And the whistle says slow down, so I guess we'll listen to the whistle. As we were doing a good 60 right there. It's not a whole lot of room between us and falling into the, the drink there prefer not to do that. Oh, so I, I realized uh, in the episode of Train Simulator where I was talking about the big boy, um, I talked about the uh, <laughs> the power reverse uh, valve and how it was a, a thing that was important and some engines didn't have it and that caused problems. And then I never told the story because I was busy blowing the big boy up because I ran out of water. Not that it actually models it blowing up. I know, much to everyone's dismay, they want to see the carnage. There's still not been a speed sign! God! I, I don't even know, like, it seems like it's 50 or 60, but I still haven't seen one. Obnoxious. And are we coming, we're coming up to that junction. We're coming up to two junctions. The last two junctions. Okay, and we'll take a little, little set. Kick it off. Oh, there it is, 60. I have no idea where I'm lined. Okay, we're lined the right way, that one. This is pretty flat, I think, and it's all 60, so we'll just let the train do the thing. Okay, we're lined all the way to the steel mill now. So maybe we can tell the story without wrecking the train. By chance. Yeah, we got 60, so... Oh yeah, choo-choo. Let's go. Whistle said let's go, so we're gonna do it. We're going to put some shelled out spots on these wheels. Anyway, the, uh, the Denver and Rear Grand in the later days leased some of the DM and IR 
Duluth Masabi and Iron Range Yellowstone locomotives. Big honking things, 2884s. And they were using them over, uh, you know, they're pretty crazy railroad, I think primarily over Tennessee Pass, which is a pretty famous chunk of railroad in Colorado that still exists but isn't operated. Union Pacific owns it, and there's been lots of hem-haw about maybe someone coming to operate it, which would be really cool, but nothing confirmed any as of yet. But anyway, the uh, all of the rear grand engines had that fancy valve that says SR where you could change the power reverse from air operated to steam operated in case of an emergency so that if you lost your air you could open that valve and rather than have any brakes to try and slow down because you've had an air problem you could put the engine in reverse using the power reverse using steam pressure and then use your engine to slow you down somewhat well the uh, the Yellowstones didn't have that and uh, guess when it guess what it needed it so they uh, they had a, an issue where they ran out of air and uh, they binned it they binned it for real with a Yellowstone and I think it ended up getting cut up because uh, I mean it wrecked pretty bad I'll have to see if I can find pictures but w once you have no air if you don't have that valve you have no way to put your engine in reverse anymore so you, c you have nothing you have no way to slow down so that's, uh, that's, that's what they call terrifying in the industry. All right, where are we even dropping these things off? B3 inbound. And B3 inbound. Well, you got to like that. We're going to have some high speed running through here. Oh, you know, and looking at my film time. Now, we're probably not close to the, uh, the bonus time. I was just checking my counter on, on how long I'd been filming. I don't think I'm going to make it. So I think it's 30 minutes or something like that. 32 minutes. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make that. Not with how long we spent trying to get up the darn hill. But we're going to give it a give it a run for its money, I'll tell you what. Got this thing open wide. We got 100. wheel spin at 90 kilometers an hour. Bar is almost on center, but it seems to prefer being about a quarter of the way out, so we'll do that. Got the throttle wide open. It's a nice bit of railroad right here. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is scooting right now. And we got a 90, and it says it's going to be going down a fair bit, so... Get back in where we can see what we're doing. Set it up. We're not using the steam anymore, so reduce the draft. Yeah, there's a 70. Grab a big gulp of air. Kick it off. And that, that stopped us real quick, so we're going to come back out on it. There we are. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we're going to fly across the bridge here. You know what? Um, I'm going to leave it with a little bit of throttle open, and we're going to go try and line ourselves in, save a little time. Surely there won't be any problems associated with that. Because I think we're... I don't. I have no idea where we're lined. Okay, we're not lined into the A yard. And it was B3 inbound, which is to the left. So there, the 4 outbound, and then the 3 inbound. Okay, it looks like we're actually... We're lined in. Okay, so now we'll go back. See how scarily close our train has gotten. Or scarily close to falling off. Or maybe it's stopped. Or maybe it's done n none of the three other than run me over. It's pretty much where we left it, actually, which is kind of nice. The whistle said, yeah, dude. Yeah, you did. Woo. What else do you know? You only know how to say woo. You're just a party. <laughs> woo, woo. Woo, woo! Well, we're going uphill. We're going to leave it. We're not even going to set the air up for this 60. Oof. I have no idea. I, f I really don't think we're going to make the bonus time. I don't know how long the first clip was. That's the, the asterisk. God, you can see the valve gear operating wrong from right here. That, that bit up there is not supposed to move like that. 
All right, we're coming into the ice station, so we're gonna blow for a station stop. Not that we've done any whistle signals other than accidental ones the rest of this episode, but, and now we're gonna be going through a yard ladder, so we don't wanna be doing that at 60. Vague grade crossing, vague grade crossing. Beautiful. One more scoop of coal. Bring it in, nice amount of power, nice amount of power. Got it. Why? Oh, I guess I've run out of pressure. Oh, I've also run out of water, and we blew it up again. <laughs> again, that's that's why you have two people for these jobs. And uh, once all the cars get in lined up, we'll just dump the air and go to the station and see what we get. Okay, just a couple more to go. I will be genuinely surprised if we get the time bonus. All right, we're gonna just uh, grab the sand and the whistle and the automatic all at the same time. Okay, and wait for them to stop. They stopped. Oh, seven minutes passed. Yeah, that was a little optimistic, but hey. We did it, we made some money. Back to a hundred thousand. One tender is uh, significantly more used than the other. You can see that uh, we <laughs> we incurred an additional like nine thousand dollars just about by by using the second engine. But oh well. <laughs> so I think uh, next time what I'll do is I'm gonna install the cutoff mod so that we can try and get a better time with the steam engine. You know, try and actually get a better simulation of what's going to happen. So, that way I can show you what it's really supposed to do. Because it shouldn't have done what it did. It should have gotten down pretty slow. But if it had the power to pull this, it should have kept going. And it certainly seemed like it did. I mean, it was just a, a fact that the pressure gauge just absolutely disappeared. I mean, a, a steam engine running tonnage should be able to generate the steam for itself to run like that. That's why they're set up with the way that the draft is like it is. But the way that the, the pressure was just disappearing without a valve event is just totally, totally nonsense. And the fact that the pressure gauge can swing so fast is totally nonsense. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, and, and I understand a lot of stuff being simplified or made easier for the sake of a game. But I think this is actually something just simplified and it doesn't make the game better it doesn't make it more enjoyable for like non railroaders it takes away an opportunity for someone to do um you know a heavy haul like that and really have a, a good time like if they really are good at the game and know what they do they could have that slog and make it work but i think they've taken away that experience because uh you can't do it because it doesn't function right so um, I think that will be something that they will fix in Simulator, knock on wood, and things will get better. But uh, one last thing, a little sneak peek for next time. I, I got this new little, new little toy, and uh, I think we're going to go play kick cars at one of the oil refineries and see if we can't uh, accidentally blow something up. So on that bombshell, hopefully not literally, <laughs> it's time to end. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Bye.